Have you ever made an electronic project on a breadboard or a perforated board that you liked very much and wanted to make it more permanent by designing a PCB, but you didn't make one because you thought it would be too expensive or you just didn't know where to start from? In this video, I'll show you how to turn a project idea from your head into a fully functional printed circuit board. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the largest PCB manufacturer in China who provide good quality PCBs at a very low prices. I've used their services for many of my recent projects and their PCBs have never failed to satisfy me. Hey, what's up? Xiam here. Many of you had asked me to make a tutorial on how to design a PCB and get it manufactured. In this video, I'll show you how you can make a circuit design of any idea you have from scratch and make a proper schematic diagram and then get it manufactured from JLC PCB. So without further ado, let's get started. We'll start by properly defining our idea of the project, like what do you want it to do and what features you want it to have. Write down exactly what you want to make with as much as details as possible. For this example, we'll be making the ESP01 Wi-Fi Relay module which I used in the home automation video. Click over here to watch it if you haven't seen it. So here I'm listing out all the functions I want the project to do, like connect to Wi-Fi and IoT cloud and the relays being controlled by optocoupler circuit, etc. Now create a block diagram to get an overview of your circuit design. Make different blocks for each important component that you want and place it in a right order of functions you want it to perform. I'm gonna draw a block for the microcontroller. You should always start with the microcontroller if you're including one. Then two more blocks for the relays which will be controlling the devices. You can also add the software parts of the project like connecting to Wi-Fi and the Blink Cloud. And most importantly, write the name of the controller you're using and its specifications. This will give us more information of what other components have to be added. For example, the ESP01 only works with 3.3 volt DC. So we have to add a 3.3 volt voltage regulator to the circuit. Now you'll have a block diagram of all pieces you need to design your schematics. Now pick one block from the block diagram and design the circuit for it. Let's say we start with the relays. I wanted to add an optocoupler IC. An optocoupler is an electronic component that transfers electrical signals between two isolated circuits by using light. It is used to prevent high voltages from affecting the microcontroller. But if you don't know how to make a circuit for any of the block, then no need to worry. You can always learn it online there are many expert forums for circuit design. Or you can find an existing circuit diagram made by someone else which can give you an example. Similarly, I made a circuit for the 3.3 voltage regulator and the microcontroller. Once you have the circuits prepared for all the blocks, it's time for you to make a complete list of the components you'll need. So now we're gonna design the schematics. For that, I'm using EasyEDA.com, which is indeed easy and user-friendly compared to many other electronic design automations. You'll have to register and make a new account and then log in to use it. Then I created a new project and named it ESP01 Wi-Fi Relay. Okay. This is the schematic design workspace. I'll start by importing all the components by searching for them in the libraries. And make sure you're using the right PCB package and it matches the components you've ordered. Then place all the components of each block in proximity to each other so that it will be easier to connect them. Place all the important components first like the microcontroller, the relay and the AMS module and then start placing the resistors and capacitors etc. 
Also, if you can't find some components in the libraries, you can always design one. For example, I couldn't find the optocoupler IC, so I had to design one myself. I've linked a tutorial in the card, so just click on the I to learn how to do so. So now I've placed all the components that I need. Now start wiring them using the wire tool according to the diagram which we made earlier. There are many features you can use like net ports tool which helps you to join nets without the need to draw in the wires. And the net flag ground to connect all the negative terminals without having to use the wires. And also, I strongly recommend you to read the Easy EDA tutorial published by them. It is very helpful as they have an in-depth tutorial of each and every tool they have. They also have many video tutorials. The position of the components and the length of the wire does not really matter much. At the end you should have a schematic diagram which looks neat and easily understandable. I'm drawing the rectangles to differentiate the parts of the circuit like the relays, the MCU, the power, etc. Note that these boxes don't electrically dissociate the parts from each other, it just makes your schematic look better. And then I named the project and wrote my name. Alright, so let's design the PCB. For that, click on Convert to PCB on the top. It shows that two packages are missing. These are the parts of which I had designed. So I also had to design the PCB footprint and match the pins. Now on clicking the convert to PCB button, it will take you here where there is a board outline and all the components are placed with rat lines showing connections between them. Then I made the board outlines according to the dimensions which I wanted. I placed the ESP01, the relays and the voltage regulator. Then I started placing the rest of the components on the PCB. Make sure that the components that need to be connected are placed physically close to one another. This will result in a shorter copper trace length and reduces the complexity of the PCB. Once you have placed all the components in a compact and logical manner, we can start routing the PCB. Then I selected the bottom layer and with the trace tool I started routing the high voltage ends of the relay with a trace width of 2 mm. Then I switched to the top layer and I changed the width of the power and ground traces to 0.6 mm. And always make sure that the trace width of power and ground paths are wider than the other traces. This is because both power and ground traces will have more current flowing through them and that will cause excessive heat on the traces and could ruin your PCBs. The software does have an auto router but I do not recommend using the auto router as it is not very accurate compared to manual routing. Especially if this is your first PCB, then it is better to manually do the routing. Another important thing is the 90 degree turns. Almost every PCB tutorial will tell you to avoid the use of right angle turns as high frequency signals emit radio frequency at right angles which could interfere with the circuit. But this is only a cause of concern if you are making a circuit of more than 10 GHz. Except such extreme applications, you don't need to worry about 90 degree corners. Despite the fact that there is no harm in using 90 degree angles, 
I'm using only 45 degree corners simply because it looks better and much nicer compared to 90 degree corners. Then I placed the vias to connect the top and the bottom layers of the PCB. A via is nothing but an electrical connection between different layers. For example, I'm using a via here to cross this top layer trace and to connect to the SMD voltage regulator placed on the top layer. Besides that, they are also a perfect tool to use when you need to move heat from one side of the board. For example, let's say we have an IC which produces a lot of heat. Then you can just place few vias beneath the IC to spread the heat evenly across the two layers. And also, I suggest you to follow the schematics for routing instead of just relying on the rat lines. The rat lines can sometimes be incorrect or misleading. After connecting all the traces, now it's time for the silk layer. Make sure to name all the parts according to the schematic so that it will be easy to solder. You can also write your name. I'm just going to write designed by the Technorite and my YouTube channel link. Once that done, our PCB is ready to be manufactured. Save the file and give it a name. Then click on File, Generate Fabrication File, and then Yes, check the RC. It shows a few errors, but these are not actual errors, it's just the tracks I connected that didn't match with the incorrect rat lines. So I just ignored them, and I click Generate Fabrication File again, and this time I chose the other option and clicked on Generate Gerber File. This will download the Gerber file, which will be sent to the manufacturer. To get our PCBs manufactured, go to jlcpcb.com. Their website has got a new update, and they have widely cut down prices on their products. Comparing with prices before, they have dropped prices up to 30% on PCBs, 20% on stencils, and up to 10% on shipping. To order a PCB, click on Coat Now and then add your Gerber file. Once the Gerber file is uploaded, it shows a preview and says Success, indicating that there are no DRC errors. You can also view the PCB with their Gerber viewer and get an idea of how your PCB will look like. Now let's take a look at the different PCB settings offered by them. My PCB has two layers, so I'll just let it be two, and you can change the quantity. The default is 10, which will cost you $2. Then you can change the PCB thickness, depending upon your needs. I wanted a thin PCB for my smartwatch, so I had set it to 1mm. And there's the color options. All colors don't cost the same. Green is $2, red to white is $8 extra, and black is $15 more. And there are a few more settings you can go through. Now we'll take a look at the shipping charges. First, to India it costs about $22 via DHL and about $7 via registered airmail. So the minimum price for a PCB to ship to India is about $9. And to the United States it costs about $17 via DHL and about $24 via UPS and about $12 via SF Express. I'll also give an example of shipping cost to Europe. Let's say France. It costs $22 via DHL, about $24 via UPS, and about $14 via ePacket. So you don't actually get the PCBs for only $2. You have to pay the shipping charge, which will be more than the PCB. But even adding the shipping charge, it is still very inexpensive compared to other manufacturers. Now click on save to cart. Here you can add more PCBs to your order. And also, only the first PCB you add to the cart is $2. And the subsequent PCBs will be $5. Then click check out securely. Here add your shipping address, shipping method and payment method. And click on continue to place your order. After a week, I received my PCBs via EMS, and they were as usual amazing. The quality you get for only $2 is just remarkable. If you had noticed, I had missed out something on the PCB, and yes, that's the ground plane. To add a ground plane, just click on the copper area tool 
and draw a polygon on the area of the PCB you want the ground plane to be. I'm not adding the ground plane to the relays to prevent short circuiting from the high voltage lane. Having a common ground on your PCB is imperative as it gives all of your traces the same reference point for measuring voltage and it also prevents your PCB from overheating. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you later.